What is the best lighting schedule for a reef tank? Getting your lighting schedule set up optimally for your corals, clams, and other photosynthetic reef inhabitants is definitely top priority, and it doesn't have to be complicated. But before I show you what a good lighting schedule should look like, and also give you a fantastic resource for getting the best settings for your exact light fixture, let's first look at why it seems to be complicated. Modern reef lighting has evolved to LED fixtures that are controllable, most often with an app on your favorite smart device, allowing you to change the intensity from zero to 100%, as well as the spectrum through granular control of each individual color of LED. You can create a complex and custom schedule that slowly ramps up the intensity for a sunrise effect, and then ramps back down for a sunset effect at the end of the day. You can even change the spectrum and look of the tank throughout the day if that's something you want to do. The amount of control that a lot of these LED fixtures provide is nothing short of impressive, but it is a double-edged sword because if you don't know exactly what you're doing, by playing around with these settings, you could actually do more harm than good for those corals in your reef tank. So what should you do? What's the right move if you wanna maximize your success with your corals? Keep things simple. There are three things you're gonna to wanna to do when you're setting up a light schedule for your reef tank. One, pick a proven spectrum that grows corals and fits your goals. Two, use the 181 ratio, and I'll explain what that is in just a bit. And three, pick the right intensity for your corals. Picking the right spectrum is actually the easy part. Most app-controlled LEDs will have a number of presets that you can choose from so that you don't have to play around with those individual LED sliders. Instead, preview the various presets that your LED light provides you with and choose the one that looks best to your eye. Or if they have descriptions as well, you can choose the one that best matches your reefing goals. Once you've got the spectrum down, that's where the 181 ratio comes in. There's no 100% right answer when it comes to how long the light should be on for. Some of us run shorter light schedules than others. Some of us like long ramp times while others prefer shorter ramp times. Those preferences come from a lot of experience with our individual tanks. For those of us who don't yet have that experience, the 181 ratio is a perfect starting point and you may never want or need to change it. 181 means one hour ramp up, eight hours full intensity, and one hour ramp down. What this looks like for your light schedule is whatever time the light comes on, it takes one hour to go from 0% to the maximum intensity, then stays at that maximum intensity for eight hours, and then takes one hour to go from that maximum intensity back down to 0%. This gives you a 10 hour light cycle, which is right in the middle of the typical range of eight to 12 hours, and a successful schedule that many reefers, myself included, use. The last thing that you will absolutely want to do when setting up your light schedule is pick the best maximum intensity for your particular types of corals. To give you an idea of why this is so important, if you were to put softies or LPS corals under a light that is much too bright, they usually respond by bleaching, which will often lead to coral loss. If you put higher light corals like SPS under a light that isn't bright enough, they can brown out, lose color, stop growing, and if the light is much too dim, they too can perish. Reef lighting intensity or brightness is measured in PAR. PAR basically measures how much usable light is available for the corals to photosynthesize from a particular light source. A PAR meter is the tool that we use to take those measurements, and when it comes to intensity, we're looking for a PAR range of 75 to 150 for soft corals and LPS, and between 200 and 350 PAR for SPS. The ultimate goal is to have the majority of the areas you'll be placing corals within those ranges, and you'll want to adjust the maximum intensity of your light until you're right at the high end of those numbers in as much of the tank as possible. So what do you do if you don't have a PAR meter? Well, that's where the incredible resource I was talking about earlier comes into play. It is a sort of practical reef lighting index of all of the most popular LED light fixtures and covers everything from light placement, recommended spectrum, to maximum intensity settings for both the softy and LPS ranges, as well as the SPS ranges, so you can get a very clear idea of what you should set your maximum intensity to, even if you don't have a PAR meter. 
You can find that playlist right here. Just scroll until you find the video on your specific light fixture. And then Randy is gonna walk you through all the most in-depth information on that light so you can set it up for best performance. Check it out.